is no small miracle. God is always on the move. Join Amy Thanon and Claudia Lodgmer as they share their hearts with you on being intentional with the way we are meant to do life with Jesus. Let's dive in deeper. Hello, hello. Welcome back, guys, to No Small Miracle. I'm Claudia. What's up, guys? And this is Amy. And we're so happy that you guys are tuning back in today. Yes, um, yes, yes. We have a very, very special... Special treat for you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, and this is limited edition because it's in English only in our yes. English <laughs> episode. So our Spanish speakers are going to be able to enjoy this topic, but it's not going to be directly from the person. But we're going to try yes. to make sure we translate everything right. So <laughs> yes, for, for sure. sure. Um, and we have someone that, to me, is very special. And to me, what do you? <laughs> mean? Oh yeah, but to me, it has to be more special. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, we have our first guest guest speaker. Our yeah, first guest here on the podcast, and I think we are very honored that it is my husband, Jeremy Lochmer. If you want to say hi, ladies, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be the first guest. Thank you, thank you for joining us. So for everyone that's listening out there um, that doesn't know you or anything like that, tell them a little bit who you are who is Jeremy Lodgmer yeah so um, just kind of a brief you know testimony uh, I got I, I, I was born Jewish uh, but we weren't really religious in the household in 2004 I got saved uh, but was still in the world I met Claudia at work uh, you know when I first laid eyes upon her across the restaurant I said I'm gonna marry that woman um, <laughs> yeah. about a year later we finally actually dated uh, long story short um, and then after we got married, she went to a, a youth camp um, and Ezekiel ministered there and, and the whole youth group really got rocked by the Holy Spirit. And she came home and she was praying in the in our bedroom and I was in the living room and I felt something in my chest and I was like, whoa, what's that? And I like opened the door like just to peek in and I was like, you know, kind of very intrigued and, and jealous. And so then uh, that went on for like a week. Uh, where I'm like spying on her praying and really just like feeling it and so then I was I remember being in the living room just screaming at God like if that's for her then that's for me why don't you just give it to me already and uh you know I'm definitely not teaching anybody the right way to pray here but it sure worked for me (laughs) you know yeah wow so that was your Jesus moment yes that's when you okay yeah awesome and so um we want to go ahead and dive right into it right Amy yeah yeah let's dive right into it um and we want to talk today about something that may be a little bit difficult, may be a little bit hard, maybe you've walked through it, you haven't walked through it, Um, but I think that if you haven't yet, at some point of your life, you're bound to to come across it. And what we want to talk to you today is about grief. I think Jeremy was the the perfect person to to have on here to talk about it. So Jeremy, if you want to just go ahead and take it away. Yeah, so um, in in Revelations 12, um, the Bible says that uh, the the spirit of the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Um, So I paraphrase, so go look that up. That's your homework for the day, (laughs) Revelations 12. Um, It's somewhere in there. You can read the whole chapter and find it. It'll be good for you. Um, So I can, you know, with that being said, I can only take you spiritually where I've been before. And unfortunately, I've been here many uh, times before. Um, I've had five close friends in high school commit suicide and both of my parents pass away in the past two and a half years Mm -hmm. um so you know that's 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 where i'm coming from uh so when i give you these words of wisdom you can rest assured that it's not just something i got from a textbook or a class or anything like that Mm -hmm. this is real real deal real life where what i've done to get to where i'm at having gone through what i've gone through Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, in uh, in Romans fifteen, Paul said to uh, weep with those who weep or mourn with those who mourn, depending on what translation um, you look at. And that Greek word, I believe, is kleos, and that actually have one of the words that it translates into is to wail. And my last name, Lodgmer, actually means the wailer. So unfortunately, it's very wow. fit. Mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, I'm the guy for this, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger if you do it with, with God's spirit. Wow. You know? wow. Um, so, you know, just before I give any kind of wisdom or advice, I have to give you the testimony and the story of this. So, you know, um, my mom, she got sick. She had cancer and, and uh, 
it was an ugly situation with the family and all these things that I won't go in detail with, uh, but she ended up in um, hospice. And I remember one morning, this is about 10 o'clock, I get a call from my dad uh, that said, you know, your mom, this is it, today's the day. She's gone completely non-responsive and she's barely breathing. She's gonna pass any minute now. Wow. So I put my jeans on and as I'm putting my t-shirt on, I clearly heard God say something to me. And if you think that it's crazy that people don't hear God's voice, well, I tell you that you're more crazy than me or that more crazy than what you think I am, that I heard God's <laughs> voice because this was more real than, than the room that we're in and that I can see all right now is that God told me you don't get many opportunities like this, son, mm. as wow. clear as could be. And so I, I rushed over there and, uh, you know, I, as an adult, I tried to make up for it as a, as a kid and a teenager being so rebellious. So as an adult, I was very, you know, submissive to my parents and just, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, especially as a Christian. And I never tried to like step overstep the bounds when I became a Christian. I wrote them a letter, you know, um, but there my mom is not saved. And I come in and, and uh, I mean, it was in a pretty scene, right? And it was clear that it was going to be any moment. And so I looked at my dad and I said, okay, I'm going to pray. And he just goes, okay, you know. Um, and so I, I walked my mom through the sinner's prayer and, and her jaw was kind of moving a little bit and she was breathing more and she was actually like kind of responding. She was responding in that way. And it was a very heavy moment. You know, it was mm -hmm. like a water faucet of tears. Wow. Um, and then when I stopped praying, she stopped responding. And my dad was like, I'm gonna go get Whataburger. He left and it was just my mom and I in the room and she passed when it was just the two of us. Um, you know, and there's a lot of other details that if you wanna ask me in person, I'll be more than happy to share the rest of it or mm -hmm. I'll take up these girls' whole entire podcast with it. <laughs> But I come home and I'm in the garage because I just don't know what to do with myself, you know? And, and I'll tell you right now that pain is not your friend. Anguish is not your friend. Despair is not your friend. And misery loves company, but that company is a pity party that only breeds ugliness. So when these events happen that will breed grief, it is in your best interest to get alone in your prayer closet with God and and go to him and you know we worship god it's not because he he wants us to grovel at him or that he needs it he certainly doesn't need it we need it because we become like what we worship yeah. and um i'm in the garage just by myself claudia was just kind of giving me some space and i heard god again saying you you don't get many opportunities like this son and it was the most painful thing. I put my phone on, um, the more I seek you, and I just bawled and it was hard for me to even speak and it was a painful worship. It was physically and spiritually painful. It hurt my chest, it hurt my heart, it hurt my legs. I remember my knees feeling pain, my arms feeling pain, um, and my brain just was like, what are you doing, why, you know? It, I had to fight with every fiber of my being to worship God in that moment. and. When I finally came to the wall, I knew um, I was at that wall and I know that when you get a wall, when you hit a wall spiritually or in life, the only way to go through it is to go through it with everything you've got and bust it down. And I like to break bricks with, you know, uh, with all of my might, strength and fervor. And I sure did it. And once I broke through that wall, it was like a weight was lifted off of my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, it was difficult. I've never never it's, it's such an opportunity it's a sad opportunity to have but once you get through that you know hey this was what i was supposed to do and you might think like you're literally crazy like your mom just died and you're just in your garage like singing to god uh the more i seek you the more i find you but the more you find god the more he pours his love out to you yeah. and that was the only thing there wasn't going to be drugs alcohol cigarettes sex anything that was going to bring me out of that moment. And they mm -hmm. say that time heals wounds, but that's not true. Wounds, they close up over time, mm -hmm. but without the proper care of them, they get messed up. 
I, I have a scar that's on me that I, I got, I sliced myself with a razor blade several years ago and it looks terrible. And like once a week, Caleb will point it out and be like, daddy, what happened? What happened? <laughs> so it looks bad because you know what? I should have got stitches, but I tried to be a man and just wrap it up. And you know, if I had gotten stitches, I might have just a tiny little line, but I didn't. So I have this huge gash on my arm, as y'all can see. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm talking about is if you don't have God take care of it, if you don't have the doctor of doctors, take care of it then you think it's fine because it's closed up but it's an ugly ugly scar upon your life that didn't have to be that way this didn't have to look this way this was my fault you know um and then i fixed the window that was in the garage that was another part that was kind of very therapeutical (laughs) you know she came in claudia comes in the garage because she hears uh the impact going she's like what are you doing I'm i'm fixing the window you know um and then, I knew though, guys. I need to back off. Yeah. <laughs> and and you know, fast forward just over a year later, uh, my dad passes away, and I remember I was at work when I got the call, and I drove home, and I made it home supernaturally. I was crying so hard uh, on the way home that I couldn't even see on I-10, and I get home, and I just I go straight to the garage, and I'm like, oh, I I really don't want to do this because I know what it feels like to worship God after a parent passes away, right? And, and I didn't want to do it. And, you know, I've, I've heard before when you worship, when you don't feel like it, it's not fake, it's faith. But I want to take that a mm-hmm. step farther that just because you're doing something when you don't feel like it doesn't mean that you're doing it in, to your own advantage or that it's going to actually help you. Mm-hmm. If you go to the gym because you don't feel like it, but normally you bench press 200 and now you're only bench pressing 135 because you don't feel like it, you're not making progress. But if you go to the gym and you say, I don't feel like it, normally I bench 200, well, I'm going to bench 250 today because I don't feel like it, that's when you're going to hit the real progress. Yeah. And and I'm such a stubborn, you know, bullheaded guy that I just, I, at least that I know how to be stubborn. And so I use it to my advantage. I said, okay, then. I don't feel like doing it so that means that there's a breakthrough that's going to happen and when you don't feel like doing something and you force yourself to do it but you do it with god you will grow and you know i did it again i i worship god and i put on the more i seek you and then in my heart i hadn't hit the breakthrough and i felt you know what i need to put on good good father because my dad just died and I was like, no, you're insane. And my brain is like arguing with my heart, if you understand what I'm saying. And, yeah. and I just put it on anyways. And it was, it was super difficult, um, super, super difficult, maybe more difficult because now both my parents are gone. And there I am crying, you know, so crying hard in, in, the, in the garage. But I, I came to that same wall all over again, wow. you know. And I just put my shoulder down like coach told me in football and hit, hit hard and went through the wall. Um, and that was, and that was it. That was, that was the key for me not being depressed and grieving for a month or even an entire week, you know, and, and here we are a year later plus, and, you know, I'll still remember it and things will trigger it and I'll just remember it. And every now and then I'll just get a little sad and then I'll just remember this moment that I broke through that wall and I'll smile because I'm not stuck there. Yeah. And and every now and then I'll still cry about it too. And, and, you know, it's okay, but I don't let myself stay there. I know that God already took me out of that. There's no reason to throw myself back in the mud. Like he took me out of this mud and he cleaned me off already. Jesus cleaned my feet with his tears. Like it was incredible. There's no reason for me to ever forget that or take that for granted. It just smiled because I know he did it already. And, and I keep going. And then I made a, a, a rack for all these hammers that were my dad's because I got all my dad's tools. Yeah. And I made the most overbuilt hammer rack ever. Like you could, you could hang a, a motorcycle or, or a car on this thing possibly wow. and I hang up all the hammers. Wow. And Claudia comes in, just, just kind of smiles and shakes her head just a little bit. And, and you know, the running joke in my head is like, you know, the next time somebody passes away, I'm gonna build a house, you know? <laughs> so having that said, you know, you can go to things like construction or arts and, and reading and hobbies and working out, you know, to deal with your grief, but that's only wounds healing over time. Mm. The only thing that's really going to heal the wound, wound the right way mm-hmm. is, is 
worshiping God. Wow. Yeah. And a lot of times they say, go to God with it, go to God with it. Well, what does that look like? In grief, in pain, with death, in mourning, it's worshiping God. That's exactly what that looks like. It's very cut and dry. And and I had to tell this story, my testimony, in order for, I think, for anybody to even consider listening to this because it's so simple. It's absolutely so simple. But you know what? The gospel is simple. The Bible is so simple. People overcomplicate it. But I think that... You know, people overcomplicate the Bible and and the gospel because at the end of the day, and I'm sorry, but like the schools are not teaching kids how to read properly and have good reading comprehension. And if the schools did that, then everyone would be able to just read the Bible, comprehend it, and say, hey, this is simple. This is very simple. This is very cut and dry. There is absolutely no gray area. It is all black and crystal clear white. And that mm-hmm. is that. And it's simple. Somebody dies, you worship God. You have grief and pain in your life, you worship God. Mm -hmm. That's it. It, This is it. It's a formula. Two plus two equals four. Pain plus grief times worship equals healing. That's it. That's that's it. Yeah. It's that simple. Wow. Wow. I guess that's a lot, you know? Like, that is a lot. (laughs) And... I mean, personally, um, I, I, I haven't really had anybody um, like that so close that I've lost. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I mean, I know that at some point, it's the, it's the fact of the matter is that, you know, we're going to go through it. Everybody's yeah. going to go through it at yeah. some point. And I know that a lot of people might have gone through that, you know, whether that was because of the pandemic or whether that was for other reasons, you know. Um, and so I think this is why it's so important to talk about this because I don't think a lot of people talk about this because mm-hmm. it's such a delicate um, subject, but I think it's a necessary um, thing to talk about. And um, I guess what I want to ask you is, you know, we have listeners that maybe don't have as close of a relationship that you have with God um, to where their first in- instinct is to just go to God. And I feel like a lot of people actually take the opposite route and just close themselves off to God because, you know, they're processing, they they have a lot of questions and emotions. And so um, taking God out of the equation with that in your personal experience, how would that have looked like dif- different without God than how it is now with God? You know, did you ever, have you ever thought about that? I mean, it would have been very different. I would have, I, I it would have been a much longer, painful, more drawn out process. Mm. Um, and when I come across somebody that would have had the same pain as, as myself, which I did, you know, it would have turned into a pity party. It would have turned into misery loves company and a very ugly pity party. Mm. And it would have just made it worse and made the wound fester and not heal up properly. Yeah. Um, and, and you have to be, you know, very intentional and conscious in what you're doing, especially when it comes to interior healing like that. And it's the same thing as like, okay, trying to eat healthy now. It's like, okay, I'm going to eat healthy now. And my default for lunch is to get a burger and fries. Mm. Um, And on your way there to get the burger and fries, you're like, I thought I was eating healthy. You have to actively think about it. Nope, wait, we're turning, we're going to the grocery store. I'm not getting this burger and fries. And it's the same thing. It's like, nope, I'm turning away. I'm not, I'm not throwing this pity party. I don't care that this misery loves company, you know, this soul is destined to love Jesus and that's what I'm going to do. And you have to be very active in watching out for yourself. Wow. You know? Yeah. And I think that's something that is also very key is that, you know, when, when Jeremy's parents passed away, when both, after they had both passed away, even though he did the going to God and worshiping and letting God heal it and he, he's healed properly from it. I love that he mentioned that even now, you know, he'll have thoughts. There will be things that will cause him to grieve again. Because I think that that's one thing that Jeremy and I have talked about. That when it comes to grieving, it's not a... It starts here and it ends here. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's literally an ongoing thing. But he... Because he dealt with it and he let... He went to Jesus. He made a decision. Yeah, to basically say, Jesus, you heal it, even though it's going to be as painful as he explained it was. um, He's now able to talk about it, you know, because I think, let's be honest, if we would have asked you, I don't know, to talk about it like a month after it happened, I don't think you would have. Yeah. I mean, would you have been okay with it? Uh, We would have gotten through it. I don't know if 
I might have said yes just because I love you. Yeah, all. see, we, but it, was, it we wouldn't have, have been like right it, now. But my yeah. contacts would be in my lap from me crying so much. <laughs> you know, so I think I just want to, the reason why I wanted to bring that up is to let you know that if you are going through grieving, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that once you go to Jesus, bam, that's it, you're done. Yeah. And you're good to go. It's a journey and it's a process. And even though he went about it the right way, it's still... A very long process that you yeah. go through and it's a journey but it's a constant of reminding yourself when the when the grieving comes again like you don't have to go all the way back to the start right, like right. look where jesus has brought you and now it's just moving forward mm-hmm. moving forward and, and keep going with that um and i know that you you haven't had that close of a person like as in your parents obviously pass away, but you faced other people close to you passing away, correct? From when you weren't a believer. Correct, yes. Um, so before I became a believer, four friends committed suicide and one was shot and killed at a gas station. Yeah. So and you... then my grandfather uh, passed away, you know, as well as my grandmother and my uncle. All, all that before becoming a Christian. And so what can you say has been like the biggest difference? Um, I mean, in, in the way that I handled it, because there's, I'm the kind of person that's not going to accept a void in my life before or after Christ, I was never going to have a void, but it was, what was I filling that, that void with? And it was a dangerous path, a dangerous things that I was filling the voids with. And, and most people can end up turning to that, whatever that may even look like, um, cause filling voids with dangerous things doesn't have to necessarily even be anything illegal or actually dangerous, but it could just be food. It could be, you know, video games all night long in Mountain Dew, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's wasting your life away by running away from reality, the truth and the pain rather than hitting it head on and and actually taking care of it. You know, when you get cut, it hurts to get stitches, Mm -hmm. right? But that's the necessary thing to do um, so that it heals the right way. When I worshiped, um, in the garage those two times, it hurt. It hurt so much. And it was like ripping the Band-Aid off. It was a whole lot of pain all at once. Mm-hmm. Probably way more than I would have ever felt in one particular moment if I didn't do it that way and I had just let it kind of go on. But it was like I I handled it up and I, I knocked down that wall right away so that I could heal properly. I made sure I got those stitches. You know, there was no painkillers. Yeah. <laughs> but it was the right thing to do. Wow, we're getting ready to wrap it up, but I just want to kind of, I have two more questions for you. I think my first one would be, um, what would be your advice, someone going through grieving right now? I mean, you, you've got to take it to the foot of the cross. You have to take it straight to Jesus. And there's absolutely no reason for you to hold anything back. He already knows what you're thinking. So just be brutally honest. You can yell to God, you can scream, you can cry, you can talk however you want. He's unoffendable. Mm. Doesn't matter. You have to be honest because when you're honest, that's, that's when breakthrough can happen as well. And I feel like so many times God is just waiting for you to just like, just admit it and be honest. Mm-hmm. You know, lay it all out. And it's fine. It's fine to, to, to say, God, I don't want to worship you right now, but I know this is the right thing to do. This crazy guy told me this is the right thing to do. So how are we going to do this when I don't feel like doing it? Like, give me some motivation, something. I need it. Just be brutally honest. There's no reason to hold back. You don't have to worry about hurting his feelings. That's an impossible thing to do. He's undefendable. I like what he yeah. said. He's yeah. That's, that'll that's, be a quote, ladies and gentlemen. That'll be a quote, yes. <laughs> that's, and that's that my, <laughs> yeah, and that's my life goal is to also be unoffendable. When people apologize at things it, it, at work about things, I go, it doesn't matter. I'm unoffendable. It's fine. It's good. Keep going. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And that's my, my goal. I don't want to cause somebody to sin by me being offended at something silly. So certainly not as God being offended by that, mm-hmm. you know? And, and definitely not by you being completely, brutally honest about how you feel about him when he already knows it. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Um, if you guys are, are, you know, I love that he brought up the whole unoffendable thing. We also have an episode in regards to that. Yes, we do. We do. 
Um, and I think just to wrap it up, since the title of the podcast is No Small Miracle and Seeing God Move in Your Everyday Life, what is your not not a small miracle that you see <laughs> in your everyday life that you think goes unnoticed by other people? Mm. Uh, being able to to persevere through anybody's attitude with joy not being affected by a stranger's attitude or bad day or condescending tone to me uh, and continuing to have joy and to just as claudia says just let it slide off like melted butter (laughs) you know and and you cannot do that without holy spirit without jesus in your life i mean one time at work um it was at a, an old restaurant that I was working at. There's like an employee bathroom with a little locker room. And so everyone's like in there at the same time. And a guy put his hand on, on my shoulder literally as I was using the restroom. And he goes, <laughs> I need to know this Jesus that you talk about because everyone is so pissed around here and everyone is so upset and everyone's giving us such a bad attitude. And you're literally smiling at people. Wow. I just don't get it. There's no way, there's no drug on earth that could make you this full of joy. I need it now. And he made me pray for him in the bathroom. I just said, let me wash my hands first, please. (laughs) I absolutely love that. Um, But so thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you for coming on here and sharing your heart, sharing something that I know is not easy. I know um, it was difficult. um, But the fact that you're opening your heart and letting, letting God turn turn this into something beautiful, you know, the pain. And and that's what Jesus is all about, guys, about getting our pain and turning it into something beautiful. Um, So with that, you want to pray for our listeners? Yeah. All righty. So, Father God, we just thank you that we have this opportunity to to get together and and to, to speak and have your words flow through us, Lord God. And we just thank you that if one person benefits from this, then... It was all worth it. We do it just for the one. And if it was for two, if it was for three, it was double and triple the honor, Lord God. And we just declare right now that if anyone's going through any grief, any pain, any anguish, that it be lifted off of them right now, right now, like a dove that flies off in the wind, Lord God, that they feel weightless in this moment, Lord, and they be brought to you, Father God. They be brought to you in a new, closer way of worship to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, thank you. And if you want to check out Jeremy on any social media, he is at Jeremy Lodgmer. And he's also working on a new album, guys. I'm going to do a plug-in for my husband, all right? Yes, yes. (laughs) Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.